the day. <laughs> crazy. Cause what? He's crazy weak in general. Just stuff. <laughs> it's been a, it's been like a slowish week, man. For it's you? like I no, you know what? It's been like a slow but fast week. I think that kind of at the beginning, mm-hmm. it felt like this week was gonna drag on, mm-hmm. and then once I started to realize that things were going on, mm-hmm. then it started to pick up. Mm-hmm. Like when we were trying to figure out what we were going to do for this podcast. This always happens. Yeah. And then like all of a sudden it's like, (laughs) let's, let's just say it out here right now. We never know what we're going to talk about next week. No, (laughs) no. (laughs) And what made me so, it didn't, it didn't make me mad. It kind of upset me was like, you messaged me first. I think you're like, isn't comic con going on this week? (laughs) And I'm like, Oh yeah, huh? That's that's probably what this whole thing is I think, about. I think I think that's what we have to talk about. Oh, hang on. By the way, yeah. can you go look at IGN's YouTube logo real quick? Yeah. Oh, you know, I saw because they changed it on TikTok too. Okay. Did yeah. you notice that it kind of looks like our color co- yeah. color scheme? Color scheme, yeah. With our kind of title, mm. Mm, IGN. Is someone We're listening? Mm, huh? So. I, oh, IGN. Dirty Not nerds. only do you have editors <laughs> copying reviews from Dead Cells, mm. now we're copying title cards title as well? cards wow. Ooh, ign you're already recording i am okay good <laughs> but uh good news actually um i just remembered right now i might as well say it here on the podcast we have uh we had a uh good good compliment on our episode of cancel culture oh yes yeah, so wait a good compliment a good, on cancel culture <laughs> which is funny they, whoa yeah the, the, <laughs> the person that listened to it is a customer here and he said that you know he loved the way that we tackled it and he said no you guys could have like gone all in if you wanted to but yeah i know that you guys were trying to be careful on what you said on what we were saying i'm like yeah because we were just trying to appeal to everyone we want to appeal to everyone but he said that he had totally agreed how what the topics we were talking about and stuff like that so i, I don't like, know what wow. this feeling in my heart is but it feels good <laughs> <laughs> so That's that was good. Our, we did good that was our, good, right. our first compliment and stuff oh and also they also liked uh the way that how you and i talk like to one another. Okay. Yeah. That we feed off each that other. That we feed off each other. Well, it's funny because they said, like, have you guys known each other since high school? Like, no, just, you know, we were just, he's a customer here and we just talk every single time he's here. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, why not just make a podcast <laughs> we'll just out of this? Just make a podcast. That's cool. Yeah. Not to give out his name, but if he's listening to this yes. episode, we appreciate the compliment. Thank it made so it made us feel good. It made me feel good. Yeah. And I now to tell you now too. that you told me, yeah. Now <laughs> I'm just like, all right. Now we're doing. Now I know that we're doing good work. It's yeah. always good to hear about that stuff. Yeah. Oh man, we're gonna start this podcast. I'm gonna good. No, yeah. I'm smiling. I don't. I'm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we ready to kick this yeah, podcast episode. Up? It, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Hello, internet. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Nerds Variety Hour. Coming to you from 12920 Philadelphia Street, Whittier, California. Aiming to be Whittier's number one podcast for all things nerdy. I'm your host, Brian. And done. Yeah, we are getting We're so getting much it. better with this. It We're only took done. eight and a half episodes. You didn't even look at anything. You I, had it, I looked had at it, but I was just like, oh, hey, okay. I got the flow. I got the I got the thing. But Good. like now, now mm-hmm. I feel like we've get, we're getting the flow. So that means that oh, your end is gonna have to cut it. So have you're gonna to have to flawless. do good. <laughs> 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 All right. So just like we started talking before, Renee, I like how you always start recording and I don't even notice it. I kind of <laughs> picked it up at the beginning where you're yeah. like, yeah, this has been a slow week, and I'm like, Renee, that's your 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 little cheeky transition. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I always like to open where it's just like you know just unfiltered not i shouldn't say unfiltered but just like just two people just casually talking that's how it should be anyways that's how it should yeah be, if yeah. you're really trying to structure a podcast and it's not like a normal conversation at mm-hmm. some point you're gonna run out of points to talk about and you're like oh what the heck like you know what, what do we do from here <laughs> um but we ready are we ready yeah, to yeah. like start this whole thing you got yes. your energy drink you got my energy drink you got your energy drink? i got my energy drink i'm hyped let's up and ready this. to go sunday afternoon sunday evening let's get going and kick Feels this podcast good to do these on sundays i think sundays sundays i like it doing on sundays it's like a it's a chill week because i i surprisingly though i feel like like with the topic that we're going to talk about today, yeah. it hasn't been a quiet Sunday. But, yeah. but, but I feel like <laughs> most other weeks, yeah. Sundays are the quiet days where we can kind of collect and think things together and pretty much figure out what we're going to talk about in this episode. Yeah. So um, in regards to what we will be talking about, we're going to be talking about comic-con at home yes yes like we mentioned before we did not know that it was going to happen this week we, yeah we lost track <laughs> what's funny because we knew that i think because we record episode two which uh, had to talk about cons and other stuff in general being canceled issue because two of, yeah issue two. issue two we listened to it in issue two if you guys are hardcore listeners and have been following us you know that 
we talked about it. We discussed our thoughts and what we were considering and what we liked and what we didn't like about it. If you haven't yet, I suggest you stop this episode right here. Go back, take a listen to what, what our initial thoughts of it was, see what we got wrong, see what you see what we actually got right, and just come back in here. So we'll wait. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, so we mentioned this in, epi- in issue two. I'm not, keep, I'm not I shouldn't say episode. We we yeah. meant, we call these issues. Issues, yes. Issue two. We so, want to be different. Yes. <laughs> 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 different we want to be unique different. damn it yeah we don't want to be other you know, other nerdy podcast exactly we're yeah. special okay we're special we're, we're, we it's even in the intro we want to be whittier's number one podcast Pascal. for all things nerdy yes. we want that attention damn it mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh in issue two we pretty much mentioned that there were certain conventions that were going to be happening the biggest one was comic-con was announcing that it was going to have this sort of stuff to do uh this conventions it was going to be rebranded as like at home conventions yeah that was much. the selling point was that you know, you didn't. You don't have to buy tickets. You don't have to wait in line. You guys, if you want to get all your stuff, all your juicy details on what's coming out and what's coming, what's going to be pre- um, previewed and stuff, just go online and just do that. Yes. So uh, in that episode, Comic Con was the big one. Mm-hmm. We also mentioned DC. I think DC it was. is doing their. They're going to be doing their own thing because you can tell it. that they are because they're not showing a whole lot. They haven't shown anything besides they only showed Justice that, League. Yeah, that little snippet clip of Justice League. But of, that was at Justice League Con. Yeah. So that's like a separate-ish oh, that's convention right. aside from So technically from it wasn't even Comic-Con. Technically not. See, that's the thing. DC's really holding out for their own thing, which comes out uh, later August. Yes. So in issue two, excuse me. Oh, my God, this energy drink. It's a yeah. The carbonation is coming up. It's delicious though. <laughs> <laughs> In issue two, we mentioned pretty much our thoughts mm-hmm. of how these conventions were gonna go on. Pretty much did we think it was gonna work or was it gonna fail? Was it gonna be accessible to a lot of people? Um I, if I can recall, I think we were kind of being really against it. Against it. We were being really detailed. We like we were being really nitpicky. That's what I'm saying. Yes, nitpicky. We were very nitpicky, and the reason why is that because me and Brian love going to conventions that's the part of it is that you get to meet people and stuff like that the vendors are in, the vendors, in person the artist alley yeah and that we, was the one that, that was, was the my one. issue yeah, yeah the artist alley was one of our main concerns and stuff like that and to hear that it's just going to be all virtual and just online or you can watch the trailers and videos on youtube or whatever uh kind of made it you know a little lackluster for us as excitement wise but you know, we'll, we'll go ahead. To be fair, yes. When the news came out, there wasn't enough information to go on That's and true. properly base our opinions they on. They didn't that. really tell us no. what, the way they were going to do it. Because I remember asking you what other information was coming out mm-hmm. uh, regarding Comic Con at home. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that you got was, oh, there were going to be like online panels and there was going to be an online store with online yeah. queues mm-hmm. and all these different things. And that was it. It was like, okay, panels, Q and A's trailers and store so basically the premise was it is comic-con condensed for the online media so you can stay at home Mm -hmm. and when asked what other information was out there nothing came out so there really wasn't enough information in my opinion to properly allow us to make like a good opinion and this isn't an excuse to kind of backtrack and say like we were wrong and this yeah. is why no we were wrong on we a were. lot of different things yeah we were again we were just being nitpicky yes <laughs> <laughs> so comic con started wednesday wednesday technically it did start wednesday but again when it did start you know we didn't i didn't realize it until i think i messaged you was it friday or you messaged me Friday or Thursday. Thursday. Okay. It wasn't until Thursday when I noticed that I was like, oh, because it was Wednesday, they were putting out stuff, announcing certain things. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. And then I realized, I think it was Thursday when the trailer for New Mutants came out on Thursday morning. And I was like, oh, wait. I'm like, is it Comic Con this weekend? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was, it was weird. Do you notice that the strain of or the string of information slowly started to come out with Saturday being the biggest day for a lot of announcements to come out? Yeah. So you mentioned it on Thursday, the New Mutants trailer. Mm-hmm. I have the list here. Let me see if I can pull it up. I want to start with this, Renee. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's say, let's start with this. As far as everything that's been revealed, mm-hmm. how have you liked having Comic Con at home? Um, the thing is, is that, you know, for the past, 
I've I've never been a Comic Con. I've been in com- comic book conventions, uh-huh. but I've never been a Comic Con. So I'm kind of already used to getting my n- news from Comic Con when I'm like on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube and stuff. So to me, it was a pretty normal thing. But again, because of the pandemic and stuff like that that's been happening, there hasn't been a lot of stuff being worked on. Uh So there hasn't been big, big things like a new Marvel movie, a new DC movie coming out and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, when when they announce stuff like New Mutants that's been on production production hell for the past two years. 2018 was when it was supposed to come out. Mm -hmm. So that's been production hell for more than that because it was scheduled for 2018. It should have been worked on since 2016. If you guys don't know, yeah, New Mutants was supposed to be announced. It was announced to come out in 2018. But for some reason, Fox was having a trouble with their other X-Men titles because they weren't doing good in the box office. Mm-hmm. So Fox was really, really kind of um, hesitant on putting out New Mutants, knowing that these are all new characters, a whole new cast, a whole new adventure for the X-Men legacy and stuff like that. So they weren't they didn't really have confidence in it. So they put it they put it on hold for a bit. Yes. And then next thing you know, Disney absorbed Fox. And now it's like, okay, well, what's going to happen with the New Mutants? And that was another year after that. Yeah. And now with everything that's going on, you know, I know that they were supposed to put it out, but it seems like Disney or Marvel doesn't have anything else to put out but this now. Yeah. So, Other than Black Widow, but again, they don't want to. They don't want to release it yeah, with yeah. anything within during the pandemic and yeah. stuff like, which is a business is understandable. They don't yeah. want to lose money on like potential tickets and stuff like that to fill box office or fill theaters, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, but in regards to like you said that you you don't go to like the Comic Con conventions. And I stuff don't like go that. to like specific Comic Con conventions because again, I don't like people. <laughs> so <I'm> like, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, I've always wanted to go because just for the experience, yeah. You know, but I, you're still a consumer. Yeah, no, that's I'm the still thing. You're still in. a consumer. Yeah. So you would still be receiving. So I mean, I'll put it this way: for for us, it's difficult. We mentioned this in issue too. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's difficult for us to acquire tickets to Comic Con. Oh yeah. Like even friends that we know mm-hmm. have to work really really hard and spend a bunch of money to even try to get tickets to go to a convention like this. Yeah, and also people that also work for the company. They used to get like 10 tickets. Yeah. But now they cut it to like half. Just to have more. Just to have more openings for other people or to save money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're still a consumer though. Yeah. Just absorbing all this media online. Oh, definitely. Was there a difference, do you feel, from consuming the media online back then to Mm. this sort of. Yes, definitely. Because before, you know, you could just go to. A normal nerdy YouTube channel and just watch a panel mm-hmm. that they would have. Now it's like you have to go to specific, like either a studio or a certain website to go and watch the Zoom panels and stuff like that. IGN know? has most of them. Yeah. Yeah. From my experiences, I've never really been able to see some of the panels, some of the big panels. Um, whenever these conventions would be in person. So if mm-hmm. they mentioned like a panel for some sort of studio or for some sort of movie or the cast of this specific movie or TV show is going to be having a panel here, mm-hmm. some of those panels weren't recorded. No. So a lot of these different things that they would talk about would be word of mouth. Oh yeah. yeah I was personally at that, you know, at that panel. It'd be like I can tell article. you this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this person was mm-hmm. at this panel and this person said mm-hmm. this thing. What's the legitimacy of that? You can't really tell because it was yeah. from word of mouth. Yeah. These panels are now online and mm-hmm. you can pretty much watch a majority of them. I know that there were a couple others that might not be accessible to, mm-hmm. you know, on IGN mm-hmm. or on other gaming sites or yeah. not gaming sites, other uh, nerdy ish media uh, web uh, websites. Um, but IGN had a majority of them. They're yeah. all online now. So yeah. you can see them because they're all Zoom calls, right? Yeah. So I kind of have a feeling that since these panels are online, most of the media has had an easier time putting all that information out there mm-hmm. because they really don't need to write articles now. No, they just kind of get a file of the of the whole, thing of the whole thing and yeah. just upload it. Oh, The Walking Dead's coming out with a new series. It's a limited two season series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, instead of actually putting in our thoughts and articles out mm-hmm. there about what was happening, we're just gonna put the whole panel up online for yeah. you guys to watch. And it's what you guys just comment down below. What yeah, do you think? and that's it. And and that's all it is. Mm-hmm. So for them, it feels like the consumption of media is so much easier for them to just throw everything out there and let the viewers and the audience know, like, okay, it's your turn to pretty much mm-hmm. figure out what's going on. So for me personally, I feel like information is more accessible mm-hmm. than it was back then. 
I say back then as if it was like five years ago, but it was only what, like last year that they had a comic con. And then like, now this is the only different, this yeah. is this year's different. Mm -hmm. uh, but the information is so much easier Yeah. to acquire. Do you feel like there was a different kind of atmosphere to this whole thing? Definitely. In oh yeah, definitely. I don't know. It's just, it felt like, you know how when you watch a panel or watch a, you know, someone will record on their phone mm -hmm. a panel of something significant happened and stuff like that. You get that audience reaction along yeah. with it. And this one, it was just basically like, you're just, you're just seeing the panel mm -hmm. and like the audience is just like not there at all. No. And then also it's weird to see just like all the celebrities and, or, or the people, all the writers or comic book writers and stuff are just sitting at home, yeah. you know, in their own zoom in, calls, in their own zoom calls, you know, just wearing whatever and stuff like that. Like I watched, um, <clears throat> I'll say this. I watched the Scott Pilgrim, uh, yeah. table read, uh -huh. which was really cool. I watched it with my girlfriend because we both love Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And they had almost everyone except for, um, Kieran Colgan, the one that played the roommate. Okay. Scott's roommate, Wallace. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't shocked. Uh, Brie Larson wasn't there. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> that's, what my, that's, what my, that's what my girlfriend said. She's like, of course she's not there. Because I told her, I was like, oh, Brie Larson's not here. I'm like, hmm, not shocking. She goes, huh? I'm like, Brie Larson. That plays Envy Adams. She goes, what? I'm like, she played Captain Marvel too. And she's sitting there. She goes, Wait, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was Captain Mar. That's Captain Marvel now. People don't realize yeah. what kind of thing she's done, mm -hmm. and now, like, they don't realize that she was Envy yeah. Adams. She was Envy Adams. Yeah. yeah, I think because not to say she was like a small time actress back then. No, no, no. But I think she, like, she she's not known. as big as it. Uh, she's not as big no. as she is now because the of the thing. Marvel movie. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. So and people don't realize that. <laughs> so who who read for her part was uh, uh, Anna Kendrick. She uh, plays the sister. I love Anna. Yeah, Kendrick. she plays the sister for Scott Pilgrim. I know. So I love she her played, so much. I know she's so much better. She should have been Captain Marvel. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, no. So it was really fun to watch. Edgar Wright was there. You know the director, uh -huh. and um, Brian O'Malley was there, but he wasn't p taking part of the table read. He was just um, doing little um, sketches for each scene that they were doing, and he would basically um, auction them off for charity. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, it's a live stream. So if people want it, they can just go on the website, see it, see that it's uploaded and then just start auctioning off for charity. Yeah. So, which was nice. It's, so it was, that was really cool. Chris Evans was there. As Chris well, Evans right? was there. Out of everyone, not Captain Marvel, but Captain America. <laughs> Captain America that was, had the time to do it. The Marvel character that matters <laughs> <laughs> was there. Brie Larson. <laughs> oh my God, man. I have my issues with Brie Larson. I, I feel have, like that's an, that's a separate I have thing. many issues with Brie Larson. Ever since she's been casted as Captain Marvel. You heard that she wants to be Samus Aran. Oh Aaron man, I Metroid. just try to ignore that. <laughs> like, I, was, I couldn't ignore it because uh, I was just like, you should just just shut up because Stop. we don't need you to ruin Stop. another person. Yeah. Just a little tangent. Cause I know that Go people are going to say like, well, why do you hate Brie Larson? Brie Larson's no, a okay, good spokesperson yeah, we should. for different things. We should, yeah. Just to clarify, I don't have an issue with a lot of the, like, you know, a lot of the ethical, okay, the so, ethical stuff that she might talk yeah, about. So let's, so let's, let's put, let's put someone up for that. That's the same, almost the same way as Brie Larson, but doesn't push it. Doesn't push her okay. ideologies. Scarlett Johansson. Oh. Scarlett Johansson is also a, a bit of a feminist, mm -hmm. but she knows that, you know, if you start pushing your ideology and start acting like how Brie Larson does in interviews, mm -hmm. no one's going to respect you. No one's going to listen to you. Because you just seem like a loudmouth baby at that yeah, point. That's yeah, that's the point. Yeah, because remember in, you know, when Brie Larson's, you know, on the uh, interview for Endgame, she's with Don Cheadle and Chris Hemsworth and, you know. Brie Larson said something about stunt, you know, using stunt doubles. You know, Chris Hemsworth uses stunt doubles because uh -huh. he knows some of the stuff is dangerous. Yeah. And he doesn't want to risk himself, which is fair. Yeah. He's an actor. He's not a stunt man. He's an actor. Brie Larson's like, well, I thought, you know, all uh, all action stars, you know, do their own stunts. And Chris Hemsworth's like, oh, look, you know, you're trying to be Tom Cruise. She goes, no, I'm trying to be me. I'm going to be me. Okay. <laughs> Going with that. Yeah. When she played Captain Marvel. Yeah. I didn't see Captain Marvel. Mm hmm. I didn't see Carol Danvers. I saw Brie Larson. Exactly. And that's my point. What? Brie Larson can't do a lot of stunts. No, but my problem mm -hmm. is that she was really good as Envy Adams. I've read the comic yeah. books for Scott Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. I, Envy Adams in, in Scott Pilgrim, the movie, yeah. was pretty much Envy Adams from Scott Pilgrim yeah. in the comic books. She so she has the potential for it. Yeah, she, but I think that mentally she wants to exhibit herself more in these roles. Mm -hmm. And that pretty much kills it mm -hmm. for everyone else. Because now you have this kind of idea that... 
you're not looking at the character that's being portrayed on in the movie. You're yeah. looking at Brie Larson yeah. trying to be that character. Yeah. It's and you're difficult. not buying the role. No, I'm not. And so when she said, oh, I want to be Samus Aran from the Metroid movie, to me it's more like, well, you have to understand that Samus Aran in the Metroid games is a very strong female protagonist. Yeah. Like she is pretty much a badass. I don't think mm-hmm. she's had a lot of like – she's not as – big as someone like let's say master chief where Mm. like she's got like an intricate storyline and all these different things i think that there is a lore back there that you have to really dig deep that's the thing no one knows samus's lore right away i don't even know it no you have to really dig deep into into a ball yeah (laughs) she rolls into a ball (laughs) there was a there was a tweet that uh underneath the uh the because i saw the twitter post right first before anything and someone (laughs) tweeted it's like in before the fanboys figure out that samus aaron is a girl and everyone was like buddy if you were an, if you're an actual nerd, yeah. you would have known this since day one. Yep. I remember I was a kid and knew that Samus Aran was a girl. Mm-hmm. I had no issue with it. I was like, Me that's either. pretty badass. When I found out she was a girl, it was it was the first um, Smash Brothers game yeah. on the N64. That's when I fool I because I, I never played a Metroid game uh-huh. at all. So I always like Samus. I'm like, okay, cool. He's a cool dude. And then my friend's like, no, she's a girl. I'm like, oh, she is. I'm like, yeah, like you can get a skin or you can unlock one that doesn't have an armor. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. You know, that's Samus cool. is a girl. Yeah. You know? I didn't care for that. I think because we were kids, it was like innocent kind of thing. It was yeah. like, oh, you know, because at least for me personally, for you yeah. and I, yeah. we didn't see that sort of stuff. No. But that's enough about Brie Larson. Yeah, Brie Larson. Yeah. yeah, you get that's all the time you get Brie Larson. <laughs> <laughs> she managed to steal this segment right. of the podcast. <laughs> God, she's weird. God, <laughs> she's working. She's working against everyone. No, so yeah, so the table read was really fun to watch. They even had the. They even played the music when the music was supposed to be playing. They did like the little, like the little caption edits and stuff like that. It was really fun. It was cool to see everyone come back. Michael Sarah looks good since the last time I saw him. He looked kind of scary. <laughs> like I was worried for him. Like yeah. he was kind of pudgy, and he had like his face just just wasn't healthy looking well he i think from there was a point where he wasn't necessarily acting he yeah. you can tell he was going through his issues mm-hmm. it's good to see him back on there i, yeah. I still want to see that table read i was at work unfortunately so yeah. i have I, I was like sad that i couldn't necessarily yeah. watch it brandon ralph uh get wears his his uh his costume yeah and so that's, that's awesome that's yeah sick. that's sick <laughs> he has his four shirt his wristbands <laughs> he has his wristbands and he's like and he has his hair kind of like it but it's weird but he has like gray hair on the side you can tell i'm like oh man I was like, scott pilgrim uh versus the world was one of my top three movies of all time it's my favorite it's one of my top 10 uh comic book movies comic book comic movie, book movies, movies yeah. yeah for me for as far as comic book movies yeah, yeah it's like it's, it's up there in top three it uh, it's pay by page like okay this is it yeah this is how it is from my understanding edgar wright made that movie um as an ode to like comic book culture mm-hmm. because a lot of the animations are hand drawn yeah so all the pals and whams and stuff mm-hmm. like that all that stuff is hand drawn yeah and inserted into the movie and, and it's it, kind of goes to show like the love that he fits. wanted to show it fits for comic book stuff especially how the movie vibe is you know yeah it's, it's all video game based and just having fun and stuff like that and I'll all give, these obscured characters i'll give that a watch i'll give that That's a good. watch soon because yeah. I, I i really i really i miss scott pilgrim versus the world yeah, when it's I, funny. <laughs> I, I watched the panel and then after that the next day i just put it on at the store i was like because i wanted to watch the movie now because <laughs> it's, like, it's a good movie when i bought the, the blu-ray version when yeah. it, way before way when it came out yeah. uh i watched it twice in one day just because oh, i freaking love that movie That's yeah funny. it was really great um but yeah so these panels have been coming out with different casts and writers and artists for the different things that have been coming out um so these panels have been more accessible to the public and i feel like advertisement wise as far as Comic Con at home goes, unless you are really, really into Comic Con, yeah, and want to be up to date with it because you were the one going to these conventions, this mm-hmm. is your like, your like, your water cooler to, uh, place to get like all this information. Yeah, you were gonna be on top of every con or every panel and all the announcements mm-hmm. like right on the dot. Yeah, but as consumers, you and I who would be getting the information online, I personally didn't feel like the advertisement for a lot of the panels was well done. No. I felt like a lot of these things were just kind of like, yeah, you you would see him afterwards and be like, oh, so this panel already happened? Yeah. Like two hours afterwards Mm -hmm. when it got posted up. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh. So a lot of the information that you and I are going to talk about, this is stuff that we just found out on the fly. It just came to us, yeah. Yeah, like it was either, you know, mentioned, uh, you know, through online posts like Facebook or Instagram, like you say, like you said earlier. Um, And it's 
notice that only the stuff that really, really stands out is the stuff that was mainly mentioned. Mm -hmm. So Archer coming back for another yeah. season, like that was a big thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen Archer since like, I think it was Vice. I haven't watched Archer. You've never seen but Archer. But I've seen clips of Archer. And Archer's episode. a good season. It's a, it's, I, or it's a good show, it's not a good season. season. <laughs> Archer's no, a good show. I it's love just... the voice actor for Archer because he's also in like, Bob's, Bob's Burgers and yeah. stuff like that. And you know what? It's because, you know, if you told me two years ago or two or three years ago that, you know, I would like adult animation series, I would have been like, shut the fuck up. I, 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 I didn't care for Family Guy. <laughs> Yeah, I think the only one I liked was maybe Simpsons, but that's early Simpsons stuff. 1990s. Like, yeah, 1990s, Simpsons. early 2000s, and yeah. that's it. That's my cutoff. Maybe like 2003, is that's on my cutoff. Give Simpsons. Archer a shot if you get the chance. Oh, yeah. uh, up I, to the point where they had to get rid of the name ISIS because of the terrorist organization. Uh, okay. After that, you can tell that they're having a little bit of an issue trying to keep up with their comedy mm -hmm. because now they kind of had to tiptoe around certain subjects with earlier seasons mm -hmm. they knew that they were tackling some like hard hitting issues mm -hmm. and like they could have like they didn't really care they were yeah. just going to make fun of it um they straight up i don't know if this is still true but archer was like you, you know archer is like mm -hmm. a straight alcoholic oh like, yeah this guy would mm -hmm. drink every day every night mm -hmm. and you know wake up and drink he's like the like the more <laughs> obscured version of like a james bond and stuff like yeah that. exactly and it, it, it's a good show just okay. that's that's all I, that's all i would say i think it's it's a really really well done show up to where they get rid of the name isis that's okay. when it starts to tiptoe around certain and community portions yeah, of it anyone that watches archer they end up loving it yeah so i haven't heard a person that says oh archer's ridiculous yeah unless they haven't seen it exactly um then you know things like rick and morty were also mentioned there. rick and morty, rick and morty season, season five, five was confirmed. announced yeah. and actually somewhat revealed mm -hmm. um then you I have haven't the... seen season four of that yet because it's not on hulu <laughs> oh um where did i see it we'll discuss it after yeah we'll, we'll discuss it afterwards i'm like where <laughs> I did like, i see season four don't, of don't reveal rick your your sources on here <laughs> <laughs> just in case uh no i i, I watched it legally i didn't oh, watch it okay. yeah no I, I just forget on what medium i oh, watched okay. it um and uh, what was it? New Mutants was out there as well. Yeah, that's but then, the big trailer. If anything, that was the trailer that stood out the most. Yeah. But then there was thing. other small stuff that wasn't necessarily advertised well enough, but mm -hmm. would have been interesting to know about. Mm -hmm. Like a Constantine reunion panel that... I knew about that. I didn't know when, what day that was at. But it wasn't mentioned at all. Yeah. And so I feel like this Comic-Con at home... They sh they should have taken and I understand this is maybe the first go around. Yeah, this is the first go around. You know, knock on wood, that the pandemic clears up next next year and think, we I have think, these conventions I, I out there. I think that's why it was the way it was because they're hoping that they don't have to do this. Again. But it is a good method of doing yeah. so because you're reaching to more people. Mm -hmm. You and I now are in this interested to look up these things. Yeah, the Constantine panel. Constantine was Keanu Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Yeah. yeah, it came out for Warner Brothers. Excuse me and um came out what 2000 and early 2000s early 2000 like 2007 2008. yeah it was like during the transformer era right uh, it may have been 2008 because that's like early shia labeouf that yeah. he's in that movie and yeah. he's really young so the fact that they're mentioning another sequel to that movie a direct sequel mm -hmm. that's pretty big news because it it's is. a cult hit because the way it ended too the way that if you guys haven't seen it it's a really good movie i mean obviously it doesn't completely follow how the hellblazer comics are mm -hmm. but again because in the in the in the comic book he's british blonde he smokes a lot and he's more of a like a wiccan he's more like a like a war he's like very he knows p very powerful magic you know he doesn't he doesn't use weapons mm -hmm. but in this one because it's a you know american you know, movie made and stuff like that. He's using like weapons, knives, guns, and stuff like it's that. It's a it's a different interpretation. Yeah, it's of a what different that interpretation. Comic was. And Keanu Reeves did a good job. If if you watch that movie not knowing who Constantine is, or even don't think of it as a Constantine movie. It's still really good. I think that the reason it didn't do so well was because of that, that mm -hmm. reimagining of mm -hmm. Constantine. Because keep in mind, all these other Constantine move or shows that have been coming out, they've all pretty much used the Constantine that we know now, but mm -hmm. dumbed down. Yeah. I'll say this. If we recommend people Constantine, they have to be ready that this is like a straight up MA comic book. Like mm -hmm. this is stuff that is like very adult stuff. Yeah. The, the smoking is the least of your worries if you read the thing, comic yeah, books. Yeah. yeah. So... I feel like these other versions of Constantine, they 
been advertised as successful even though they've been canceled a That's lot thing, yeah. but it's more of like a direct representation of what that constantine was in the comic books mm-hmm. and this one mm-hmm. was like a cult hit like people yeah. liked it they liked so, it because it was just a good movie yeah, yeah so they didn't even mention it though they just comic con at home was just kind of like yeah it happened and it's like okay well can we know more about it <laughs> yeah. ign only released i think one video of it with and their own thoughts really yeah and that was it and you're How like long's the video it's like a 10 to 14 minute long that's video or something. crazy yeah and it's like you should have been i think you should have talked a little bit more about it because there was news about it coming yeah. out with like you know um supposedly like a revival of a set of a sequel to it yeah so it should have been you know i feel like in my opinion it should have been talked more yeah well they um, were doing and then keanu reeves is also doing a uh, bill and ted one that i saw last minute i just saw like right now he was doing one for bill and ted for uh, i think that panel Face happened today yeah yeah. It was Bill and Ted face the music, which was cool. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Oh, and then they released a new trailer. Yeah. For Bill and Ted, you know, face the music. So as we're recording this podcast now, still more information's coming so, out. Yeah. 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 So this is still like, you know, still still some fresh stuff. But mm. I think the consensus is that the Comic Con at home was a good concept. I think that it is a good concept. Yeah. Maybe in the future there might not be a need for these public conventions. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, this isn't to say that I personally don't want these conventions to happen. Yeah. I think that these conventions in person should happen. And again, knock on wood, mm-hmm. the pandemic clears out next year and mm-hmm. we get to go to these places. But a hybrid of a public convention and online conventions mm-hmm. wouldn't be a bad idea. No, it wouldn't. And actually, it makes the like reunion paddles more possible because sometimes celebrities can't afford, make can't make it to go to one oh, no. place. Celebrities can afford. Well, I mean, yes, usually. But they can't make yeah. it because of other businesses yeah. or other, uh, uh, what's it? What's the word? Other. Equ- um, oh, no. You for, I forgot. I, forgot. The, I, I got a. Other responsibilities other or whatever. Responsibility. Yeah, because yeah, even know. on the, what is it? On the Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Like, even though Chris Evans was on the panel, after his, after his uh, lines were done, he had to go. Mm-hmm. because he had to go do other things yeah and so that even shows that like oh crap like so if they even did that like now you probably wouldn't show up if they actually did a table read at comic-con we have the technology to do yeah. this mm-hmm. it's it, it's undoubtedly mm-hmm. out there that there is the technology and tools necessary to make this accessible to the public mm-hmm. now if we were to see another online convention like this in the future mm-hmm. I personally think that these conventions should hold more responsibility in having a group of people be in charge of the online portions of this yeah. and make this easily accessible to the public that might be interested mm-hmm. in it. You know, granted, these public conventions, when you go in person, the Hall H one, sometimes they're super exclusive to only the people yeah. that have the tickets to go there. By all means, keep that portion of it. Mm-hmm. But if you want to have an online portion and make it public so that people are able to enjoy these things at home, mm-hmm. why not? Yeah. It's cool. It's a great concept. Yeah. I personally think that it's really good because it gets you motivated to keep track of these sorts of things. You and I found out about it Thursday when the convention actually started. Mm-hmm. Right. But now that we know we've kind of been picking nitpick, like we've been picking here and there, the things that have interested us. Yeah. You know, what would you think is probably the best way to approach this in the future? I say hybrid. You say i'm thinking about this whole thing and it's just like it's so scrambled up that's the thing it's just basically they just gotta like make sure they have to have better organization Mm -hmm. if they if this happens again where we're stuck at home and stuff like that you just gotta advertise it better you gotta maybe or maybe do a like a online newsletter or notification thing like you could just you know go on the comic-con website and be like be notified whenever a panel goes on or whatever a you know, something gets announced, like, boom, you have it right there on your phone straight to you. Not that, you know, we have to go on Facebook and be like, oh, IGN just posted something about Comic-Con. Now. Something. So, yeah. yeah. It's just better organized. The other sources or the other medias releasing the information isn't bad. Mm-hmm. But you know that Comic-Con could have, and if it's a money issue, they could may- be making a lot of money if they themselves took the responsibility of notifying yeah. or working with other media to distribute that information, they don't necessarily have to distribute it on like their website and stuff like that. Like the live panels could be on their website yeah. or on their media. That's the thing. And they, then, have, they can totally do yeah, that. And then repost the the panels to another media, yeah. IGN, GameSpot, mm-hmm. Games Radar, there you go. Kotaku, something yeah. else, you know, have them be the ones to redistribute yeah. that information or redirect you to the site. Mm-hmm. Money should not be an issue. You know that the nerds are willing to go through the advertisements and spend some sort of money to watch these sorts of things happen. Yes. You know, there is the community out yeah, there. Yeah, we willing to do anything to get any information we need, especially for Comic-Con. Exactly. Now, the question is, are they willing to put in that work for next year? I think if 
I think because they don't know what's going to happen next year, especially with the pandemic and stuff, they probably not going to think about doing it again right away. But they should. They should. But I feel like Comic Con. I feel like Comic Con and all sorts of companies. They're they're like us, where it's like they're we're, we're hoping that it, it's it goes back to normal next year. Mm-hmm. We're hoping. But again, I think they don't want to realize that it could. This could stretch out to next year. But we're in twenty. Like yes, okay, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. I don't want to keep like yeah. putting counterpoints against yeah. anything you're saying. But in my mind, it's like we're in twenty twenty. Yeah. Next year, twenty twenty one. We're in the future. Like <laughs> it's, we're, it's, it's we're, like, yeah. Basically, like you guys remember in the nineties, they're like, oh yeah, in the future, in the two thousand twenty. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have this and that. 2018 was like Back to the Future and we should have had hoverboards. I actually watched, what is it, uh, Ready Player One and I thought he said 2020 or 2024 or 2027, but he said 2127. So I was like, okay. (laughs) I was like, like, Okay, we're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, Favreau is now he directed yeah. movies in VR, mm-hmm. so you you never we're, oh, we're there. Yeah. It's just the accessibility. <laughs> but we're in still 20- waiting for my hoverboard. <laughs> Where's my pink hoverboard? <laughs> Excuse me, please. Uh, where is and it? And it must I, be pink. <laughs> Self tying Nikes, please. Self tying Nikes, yes. So, you know, we're in 2021. Yeah. There are tools available so that these companies mm-hmm. can make these things more accessible yeah. to the public. Yeah. To me, it feels like these organizations are playing it safe yes. and then just blame it on the public or other things for them not innovating. You basically described a business. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> okay. Cue, like an, uh, cue breaking glass. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, the convention that comes to mind is E3. Yeah. You know, E3 I felt like this E3 point gave failed. up. I feel like I feel like the company that that does E3 just was just like we're done. That's it. So guys, yes. yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yes, 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 one hundred percent, yes. Yeah. But also, E3 never innovated. No, they, they just they they were like, yeah, we're gonna let these other companies do it. Mm-hmm. You know, Microsoft and Square Enix and all these other, Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah, come on, make your presentations yeah. here. But what are you providing that's different? Yeah, Comic Con. Did something completely different they now. Did. They provided a they platform. Tried. Yeah, they tried. And they mm-hmm. provided a platform for all these organizations to come in and give the audiences something. Mm-hmm. The only reason I think that it didn't necessarily work out well enough this mm-hmm. year is because they didn't advertise it well enough. But if the advertisement but, yeah. was there, we could have added we could have been so much better. The thing is, is that also advertising means m- money has to be spent. Yes. And I guess it just and it, you know, it just shows that comic-con put in enough money to try to do what they were doing and they didn't want to put out more for specifically advertising because they thought it would just they they basically were relying from word to mouth yes and that's not good no that's not because it goes to show you and i only never found out about this yeah, because never, you said something i said something I and i was like oh you. shoot yeah, like you said it to me and i was like that was it <laughs> like, that, yeah so it's like that doesn't work. It doesn't. Like you want these things to work. You got to advertise and put in the effort to notify us mm-hmm. so we know. This isn't a bad idea. Mm-hmm. It's not a terrible idea for mm-hmm. them to do a hybrid next year. Yeah. Would 100% work. I'll tell That'll you right work. now, a couple friends on Facebook that I have love the idea that they get to enjoy this at home. Yeah. They would love to go to the per, uh, to the conventions at home or, mm-hmm. you know, in person. Yeah. But they love this idea too. Yeah. So then do a hybrid. Yeah. You will have an audience... I can guarantee you this, maybe twice as large Mm -hmm. as you normally would. Attendance is twice as big as you normally Mm -hmm. have because of this. The the traffic to an online media Mm -hmm. put together with the traffic of in-person, you know, attendance Mm -hmm. is tremendous. Yes. Massive, 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 you know, and it only makes those items that you even sell. If it's merch and Mm -hmm. for the vendors, you only make those items much more exquisite and much more unique yeah. if you only sell them in person mm-hmm. because now you have the in-person events yes. and you have the online media. Mm-hmm. So why not? I would say I'm for a hybrid. Yeah, no. I take back here. Yeah. my opinions mm-hmm. from issue two. <laughs> okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, we now that's it's been a we know it's been it happened and we see how it how people have been reacting to it and how it how it's been a kind of a good thing this whole thing it it's not a bad idea to do the same thing or if anything do it to overseas where people from other countries can't come to comic con you know if mm-hmm. if 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 you had a choice where it's like okay well we don't want to make it to everyone in the whole world okay then just do it for overseas like fans and stuff like that you know 
just make it available to so that everyone or most people can see this or see certain things and just have that you know there is an audience overseas yeah too. there is there, there is. always is yeah the story of uh, San Diego Comic Con is actually an interesting one because it wasn't supposed to be as big as it is but yeah. it is now the biggest convention mm -hmm. when it comes to announcements and stuff like that these companies wait for San Diego Comic Con specifically for oh, their yeah. announcements movie studios so, always wait they're like you know oh let's yeah. just put it out you know exclusively for the Hall H yes so yeah. this could happen Mm -hmm. But Comic-Con needs to wake up as an organization and mm -hmm. say, if it's, look, if it's the money, there is money. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you, this is me talking to mm -hmm. Comic-Con. Yeah. There is money. Mm -hmm. You guys can make money. Mm -hmm. I understand. You want me to speak business? I will say there is money. Yeah. But you guys need to put in the effort mm -hmm. and hire people to help advertise this to make it better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually implicate or not implicate, actually um. Man, I'm forgetting English. I feel like these energy drinks really wake me up, but they make me forget words. <laughs> implement. That, yeah, implement, yeah. <laughs> implement. They can implement yes. a hybrid version of Comic-Con Yeah, there can year. be an online ticket. You can buy an online ticket. Then that'll be great. And that way you get exclusive access to a taping of Hall H or something like that. So, ooh. Comic-Con. Bingo. There you go. Hey, Comic-Con, we're available for next year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do an online panel. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what if it just be me and you and just like one viewer <laughs> <laughs> that's fine we'll entertain that one right. viewer <laughs> what time yeah. how much how much time we got on the recording <laughs> we got 41 minutes okay because we still have to mention pretty yeah, much oh so you were gonna you were gonna say something before i cut you off no yeah no it's just like the just to close it out just if if comic-con is worried about the whole online thing and it's like they won't make money off of it then do it where when you're selling tickets for next year at comic-con have that op option for online tickets yeah it might you can have a limit try it out have a limit of people that can do it online see how it works you know that way you know i mean uh, again comic-con you have to know your audience maybe like i think like maybe 60 or 50 percent of nerds are introverts you know yeah. like you know i'm part of that kind of like as well too like i don't want to go outside half the time but you know i again want to know what's going on at comic-con yeah i would totally buy a virtual ticket hey hey ready for this yeah ready for this yeah. hey whoever owns a streaming platform yeah. listen to this please <laughs> if you guys contract yourself with comic con i can guarantee you massive business growth here's why what is the number one streaming platform right now netflix or no oh. i meant for like streaming oh, streaming twitch like twitch oh. Is, oh, oh oh now i hear the gears ticking here Dang. huh huh youtube comes YouTube. in and oh, tells comic con hey you know what these panels that we have out here mm -hmm. I'm even getting chills, man. I feel like I'm like, <laughs> we're just going, why are we're, we not? we're getting onto something people. <laughs> and if you hear that Comic-Con does this, let us know. So I, we can IGN already them. copied pretty yeah. much our, our, you Someone's know, our cover. So hey, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, YouTube, <laughs> if YouTube comes in and they say, Hey, you know what? This would be a very good idea and opportunity for us to partner up with Comic-Con to stream these panels mm -hmm. live. Oh my God. The amount of money that they could possibly get. Especially for Hall H conventions. Yeah. yeah, massive, massive. And by all means, if you guys want to control how things are going on, because I know that certain panels that are restricted and can't mm -hmm. be seen, you know, if you want to restrict how it's going to be well, announced yeah, and stuff, can, by they, all means, go yeah, for it. If they can restrict the live stream and stuff, that's totally possible. You could totally restrict where you don't have to, you know, how some computers or some phones have that recording, like yeah. screen recording. You could totally find a way to go past that. Yeah. You could just be like, okay, this the section right here, copyrighted. You can have like a massive copyrighted thing right then and there, and say like, please do not do that. You know, there's ways of doing it. Yeah, there's ways. So just it, the 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 ways that this can be done are massive. Yeah, but these companies need to get on it. Yeah. They just need to get on it. Yeah. You're a hundred percent right yeah. on this. They just they need to get on it, man. <laughs> yeah. We just came. We just gave them great ideas. Gave them great ideas. Well, Watch it happen next year <laughs> by issue like fifty I'm that we're seriously on. Seriously, email comic-con that then and email this file that we're just gonna and send it why to them. not yeah so just let's 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 date it right now what time is it just in case this happens <laughs> july 26 502 p.m there you go here at undercity comics <laughs> guys in whittier if i see comic-con doing this i am 
I am giving them a massive angry email <laughs> and this file attached to it. We thought of this idea first. So whoever just implemented this with our, without, you know, acknowledging mm -hmm. us, y'all are getting sued. Yes. No, actually, Comic-Con, we love you, please. No, we yes, won't sue you. Just, yeah, just <laughs> hire us. Have us involved, please. I'm just saying. All right. So no we... one's, no one's talking about lawyers. No, no. No one's talking about What lawyers? Suing? What's this L word you're talking <laughs> yeah. about? All right. So. <laughs> So let's talk about at least one thing that we liked from Comic-Con. Things that have popped up from yeah. Comic-Con. I think one of the biggest things. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, because like I said, we said earlier before, yeah. you know, only some of the big stuff that yeah. was announced got the advertisement. Yeah. We said Constantine didn't get the advertisement yeah. it deserved. Mm -hmm. Scott Pilgrim was kind of announced. I think yeah. that was like an opening. I don't think it was a part of Comic-Con. No. But I it was like. part. It was like. It was announced. I know that they were going to do it, but I didn't think they were going to actually do it. <laughs> like, yeah. So they did it, but it wasn't necessarily really a part of Comic Con. I mm -hmm. think it was, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the stuff that stood out from this year's Comic Con, mainly, you mentioned this. Yeah. New Mutants. New Mutants. I think that was the biggest trailer right now that came out. It came out on Thursday. And announced Thursday announced trailer there's... and opening. Yeah, trailer and two minute opening, which I watched, and they were both pretty good. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was already when when the trailer came out two years ago, and they were showing just basically the characters and how the how the vibe of the mm -hmm. movie was. We didn't get any like indication of mutant powers yet because they just got done filming, so it wasn't it wasn't up to CGI yet. Mm -hmm. And so now the movie has been on hold for what two or three years now. Longer four. Has it been four Keep years? Keep in mind that it was in production by like 2016, oh, yeah. oh, 2017, yeah. released right. 2018. Yeah. Then they had to redo some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And now it's Because it was going to be like a rated R, wasn't it? Yeah. And then now it's a PG-13 movie. Which, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Disney's putting it out. That's why. And? Uh, and so. And? That they can only put out PG-13 No, they can't because they own Alien now. So if they release a PG-13 mm. Alien movie, well, no, someone's going to die. Well, now they're putting out Marvel and, well, was it? Predator and Alien are going to be featured in Marvel Comics. I heard about that. Yeah. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel, too. But they do put out mature content for the comic books. <laughs> so Yeah, I mean... my face is not happy right now. <laughs> Let's go on with okay, the okay. New Mutants. New Mutants. <laughs> so they finally put out the trailer with everything, with all the characters using their powers, mutant powers, all the CGI. And I have to say, it does look pretty good. You yeah, know, I there's mean, a tone change. There is a tone change. It was it was originally like when you first saw the teaser trailer, it didn't feel like your normal X-Men movie. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel flashy. It wasn't, you know, that's because Fox was putting it out and they wanted the director wanted to do something new. And that's fair. You know, that's you could do whatever you want. We you know, we talked about this in The Mandalorian. You know, it's like put out whatever vibe you want to put out for the film or whatever episode you want. Just make just make sure your source and your content is good. Uh -huh. you know? So with this one, it looked pretty, pretty good. But again, like you said, tone change. It's a little bit not darker, darker. It's just like it's more still, serious. Yeah, it's more serious. It's not like scary. It looks more like the tone is basically just like it's not a fun, like a happy, bright, fun Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. as they've been but this one looks like you said a more stern serious film it looks like they're gonna be touching on with a lot of subjects and stuff like that like they, you said they i told you before we started recording yeah. that i have a feeling that new mutants is going to be very politicized yeah. now this isn't a bad thing no it's just are you going to politicize it in a, in a way that's going to be informative or a way that's going to be message stricken like, are you yeah. going to try to put messages in front of our face and mm -hmm. try to, you know, like propaganda, I guess yeah. you could say. You can be informed. Great movies that were informative were really good because they used it as a story standpoint. There was a post you put on Facebook about someone fighting. Oh, Stanley. Yeah. Yeah. And they mentioned X-Men in that. What was it again? I forgot it what was, it was. Well, it was. Um, I don't want to pull that because it'll take time. But let me find I, it for you. Just okay. keep talking. Yeah. I remember. I remember part of the article. It said like, I put it like three days ago, I think. It wasn't. It wasn't that long. Ago. I don't think it was like ago? three days ago. Okay. No, no. I put it out a while ago because it was a um, it was about a person that said that Stan Stanley was um, sexist, I think. He was, uh, he would never, uh, it was a reason, I think it was because Peter Parker, he said Peter Parker, that's right, he said Peter Parker would never be gay because it was the way, the, the way that he was written wasn't supposed to be gay. Oh, here it is. I yeah. don't know if it was a meme or if it was like an actual like 
like a, like a legit it does it looks it doesn't look like a legitimate post mm-hmm. but it does bring up some good points yeah so the quote is or the 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 post is Stanley was a bigot. He yeah. said Peter Parker could never be gay, so stop with the Stanley worshipping. Mm-hmm. He not only refused to make Spider Man queer, he also stated that Spider Man should never be gay. If you continue to idolize him, then you are just as bad. And then someone, fangirl for all fandoms, this some person that mm-hmm. I guess like replied to this, uh, she said uh, he said Peter Parker shouldn't be gay because characters weren't written with the intention to be queer. There's more to LGBTQ plus mm-hmm. inclusion that just queer washing already established non queer characters. Mm-hmm. And also, Peter Parker isn't the only Spider Man. Stan Lee created X Men, and this is where this connection yeah. comes in, to show how we shouldn't be discriminant or shouldn't be discriminant mm-hmm. or be afraid of people just because they are different. That's when we are trying to paint as a bigot. Yeah. And that I remember because this goes back to the whole cancel culture aspect. Yeah. You know, that we're going to tie in different issues yeah. at this point. But this goes back to that. New Mutants takes place, and correct me if I'm wrong, after the House of M. Yes. Okay, so this is when the mutant gene was placed back into society. Yeah. After Scarlet Witch erased it, Mm -hmm. which was the whole arc of House of M, Mm -hmm. then she reverses that, and you have non-suppressant... Oh, oh, I don't don't think it was House of M, because House of M came out early on in this... Well, not early on. It came out, like, 2000 and something? Not the the new one, the old one. Which one? Because, no, because that's... That's like, what am I thinking of? There was one where Scarlet Witch erases the mutant gene. I think that that is House of M. But the thing is, is that New Mutants came out in the 80s. So then what is it? So, But the thing is, is that New Mutants came out after, I think it was like, oh, I'm probably going to get ridiculed for this. But uh, <laughs> but it was like some storyline where like the X-Men were gone or dispersed. The X-Men, original team. Okay. And I think it was because of Charles and stuff like that. So Charles went out to find his own team. Which was the New Mutants that uh-huh. he called them and stuff. It was a younger group with people, and he would rec- re- recruit them one by one because they're young, didn't know that they had a mutant gene, and they just came on. They just just happened to have them and stuff. And society was afraid of them yeah. because they were different mm-hmm. than yeah, people, they were right? Different, yeah. yeah. So that's where that political message can come in, mm-hmm. where now you're talking about discrimination against individuals that basically look like us but yeah. aren't us, yeah. and so society fears them. We see this in uh, Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Where Superman is portrayed as a god. Yeah. And people are protesting outside of uh, the White House. Is mm-hmm. it the White House? No, on the, what is it? Um, the Congress or something? Something. It's some sort of, or maybe the Senate, I think. Some some yeah. place in Washington, D.C., yeah. basically calling him out and saying that they didn't want someone like that. that the they kneeling, never asked for anyone. They never asked for a god anyone. or something like that. And so you see these sorts of aspects out mm-hmm. there. And so there's nothing wrong with that kind of no. you know message being put in there it's because always, we've seen it in the 80s. Yeah, we've seen it in the 80s. It's always an interesting concept, too, to see that, you know, how people would react to a superhero human being or a mutant in today's society and stuff like that because that's still relevant today Mm -hmm. especially how things are right now you know i personally want to see the new mutants tackle that heavily Mm -hmm. this is a new series because it's supposedly going to be a trilogy right yeah i want them to tackle this hard because Mm -hmm. the x-men uh, even though they mentioned it, mm-hmm. the movies never really tackled it well enough. No, they I just, think Apocalypse and First Class yeah, kind of tackled it, they, yeah, but not heavily. You can do this with the New Mutants because mm-hmm. it is teenagers. Yeah, like they're relevant to today's mm-hmm. society at this point. Yeah, you know, so you can't do it. Mm-hmm. You just said it though; it has to be done in a good way. It has to be done in a good way. So, what are you expecting out of the New Mutants? I am expecting at least um, good. Uh, origin stories it looks like we're gonna get an origin story for each um, mutant because they do have interesting backgrounds and, and they're the like original that. mutants they're the, the original new mutants this is the original OG group guys so I did research on this so they have like cannonball um, they have a guy that the that can have um, form the powers of the sun with his whole body and stuff like that and they have what's it uh, a girl that can turn into like a cat or a bobcat or something like that let me see if I can find the article and then um, the main one is a girl that can turn your worst fear. That might be a spoiler, actually. Turn your worst fears into reality. It's Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane, that's her. Magic, Mag- Cannonball. Magic is uh, Colossus, uh, Colossus uh, sister. Okay. Cannonball is really cool. He basically can just form a, an energy thing from his waist down. And then he has like a shield that's in, in, impenetrable as well, too. Mirage and Sunspot. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this. There, it looks like they're trying to pay 
homage to the original mm-hmm. version of the Mutant Mutants. It's it looks very interesting. It, it doesn't. Does. I like how people have this, have described this trailer as like, oh, it's going for a more fear inducing kind of like mm-hmm. atmosphere. I didn't get fear. I got mm-hmm. seriousness. Mm-hmm. Like Apocalypse, the yeah. opening scene to Apocalypse, mm-hmm. X Men Apocalypse. Like that is a serious that scene. That was actually really good too. That because opening. that's all of the um, Sentinels essentially wiping out mm-hmm. the entire Earth mm-hmm. and like getting. It's like a freaking you know mm-hmm. which i guess I'm, I'm also disappointed that it, we didn't get sentinels right away in the x-men movies because like, you want to build up to that yeah but it took what like six three. movies <laughs> yeah <laughs> it took a while no you, do you want to count the first three because the yeah, first because three... the first three were essentially tied yeah, in with right Days until of they freaking <laughs> is it yeah they... no it's tied in it's tied in but they threw them away afterwards okay did i give you this whole rant about x-men and why i don't <laughs> like the freaking movies no i think that it feels like you wasted years of your life watching the first three movies because mm-hmm. after watching uh days of futures mm-hmm. is days of futures past yeah it literally threw that away. Yeah. Because it said, yeah, forget those three movies. We're mm-hmm. revamping it and only first class matters. <laughs> so then why the hell did I waste all these years watching the first three movies? But Logan was still in first class. You Doesn't freaking family. matter to me. <laughs> Logan, of course you're not gonna get rid of Wolverine. Yeah. And what's his face's name that plays Logan? Um Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. You're not gonna get rid of him. He's mm-hmm. your moneymaker. Yeah. But still, like you got rid of the first three movies, and then what was the point? Yeah. Now those movies don't count. So mm-hmm. if I have kids, I'm not gonna yeah. show them those three movies. I'm yeah. just might as well start with the first class. Yeah. Oh, but they matter. No. Fuck off. They don't matter. Yeah. They don't matter. Oh, but they're good. No, shut, shut up. No, they don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's the Joker, not bitch. You really want that quote? Yeah. No. Oh, no. God, no. No. Don't start me on this rant. I'm going to start with the rant. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, to, yeah, on. but to close it, you know, to move forward to an, our next topic, uh, the thing is, yeah, so New Mutants, it looks good. They still haven't released a date when it comes out. They won't. Because I don't know what they want to do with it. Either it's a theater at home film or you have to, if it's going to be on Disney Plus or something like that. So we'll see. We'll Mm. see what future plans are going to be for that movie. I'll tell you right now, Mm. early 2022. Really? Yes, because you don't want to release the movie. Mm -hmm. You're still working on this movie. Mm -hmm. You are still definitely working on this movie, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to delay this movie as much as possible to get the most numbers and the most ticket sales. This means once the pandemic is over, you Mm -hmm. still have to wait a couple months before or afterwards to to have theaters kind of set themselves back up again. Yeah. So early 2022, you know hoping that we have the vaccine and everything gets cured and we go back to normal living situations. Mm -hmm. You want to have stable theaters. Mm -hmm. You want to have good ticket sales and Mm -hmm. you want to have the most attention, which is why tenant the David or not the David, the Christopher Nolan film got pushed back again. Mm -hmm. They're not going to release it straight to the straight to home. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. They don't have accurate numbers. Mm -hmm. Scoob, for example, Scoob did well, quote unquote, but there are no actual relevant numbers to determine its successes. Mm -hmm. That's what the, that's what these industries want. They want actual hardcore numbers. Mm -hmm. Early 2022 is what I'm going to say. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that we're kind of running short on time. Yeah. So let's talk about the one DC thing then. We talked about a Marvel thing. Let's talk about a DC thing. That technically wasn't Comic-Con, but is Comic-Con. It came out around the time. (laughs) It it came out during Comic-Con, but it's its own comic con it's like a like whatever it's a cousin thing. It's a cousin thing. Because it came out during the Justice League, Mm -hmm. uh, or the Justice League Con or whatever you want to call it. Um go for it. So it was revealed that Scott Scott Zack Snyder revealed a mini clip or like a little clip of a clip of the reveal of Superman coming to Alfred. And the thing is, though, is that this version, Superman comes to Alfred with a different color scheme, which is a black suit Superman. And uh, that took the internet, you know, by storm for like the last, what was it last night or something? Came out yesterday? This was early yesterday. Yeah, early yesterday. And the thing is, is that that was the original plan for Justice League was that Superman was going to come back. He's going to come back with his black suit and stuff. And the the reason why that's significant is because when Superman died in the death of Superman, he came, does come back with a black and silver suit. That suit and the reason why that suit is, you know, important because when Superman comes back, he's not as full strength. He's not, he's just got resurrected and he's not fully, um, absorbed a lot of um, uh, yellow radiation from the sun, so they built in the suit to kind of compensate for that. You know, it's, it it's uh, like a almost like an armor in a way. It's it's the scientific aspect of like dark colors mm-hmm. in clothing mm-hmm. absorb more sunlight than lighter yeah. colors, which yeah. reflects it. Yeah, so it's supposed to help them out in the fight and stuff. I don't know if that's where they're going 
in this movie. You know they will. Probably. They better explain why he has a black They don't suit. have to, yeah. but you know they will. <laughs> yeah, they will. And um, so it's really cool because it was a whole scene that Alfred and Henry Cavale were doing, or it's Alfred and Superman were interacting. It was actually a longer segment than just Superman standing there and Alfred's like, oh, I hope, you know, I hope you're ready or I hope we're right that we need you. And that's it. This this one the the there was a more interaction, mm-hmm. so there there's already a diff a significant difference in the new Justice League Snyder cut. I think I mentioned earlier in the issues, but I'm slowly trying to watch all the DC movies I missed. So I just finished. So I think uh, an issue two. I said that I watched Shazam a couple weeks before. Mm-hmm. Just last week I finished Aquaman. Pretty good film. A little bit cheesy, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah, Aquaman. Yeah, Aquaman is is pretty fun on its own. Yeah. Um, I, I just can't get over the tremendous amount of CGI that is used in that movie and how it doesn't look as clean as it should. Yeah. Um, so I'll get into Wonder Woman afterwards, and then I'll probably have to watch the uh, Joss Whedon version of Justice League before, yeah. you know, just to kind of get an idea. But the point that I'm trying to get to is it's interesting seeing – how well they're doing advertisement wise for this new justice league movie, Mm -hmm. because when this came out, this took the internet, by. this was the hardest hitting news coming out of comic con week. Oh, definitely. Because this is like the movie that most people are waiting for. Mm -hmm. Even someone who's not a big of a DC fan like myself. Now I'm interested. Now Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, like tell me more, tell me why. And tell me the significance of this. Mm -hmm. It is a tremendous deal. For Zack Snyder to come out and say, I'm not going to use Joss Whedon's um, clips yeah. or any pieces that Joss Whedon worked on. This is going to be 100% my film. Yeah, That is tremendous mm-hmm. from a filmmaker's perspective. Especially after the tragedy that he faced during production and mm-hmm. you know dealing with that for years now. Um, that he's still motivated and still wants to show his original version yes. to the fans. Let me tell you this. As anyone that wants to work on projects, yeah. imagine having everything, everything practically done, mm-hmm. right? For a project that you're working on. Yeah. You hearing some bad news. Yes. Leaving that project for about almost a year and a half to two years. Yeah. And then saying, I'm going to come back and grab all the pieces of information, not all the pieces, all the parts and pieces that I've worked on mm-hmm. and now assemble the project. Yeah. Now. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you would be able to take that task on the same way you did when they first hired you? If I was rightly motivated by people that constantly wanted to see my finished product and telling me like, you know, oh man, like your version would have been better or, oh man, like when is it going to happen? People constantly telling me, yeah, if I had the right motivation, right people behind me, definitely. Yeah. But that motivation would be very difficult to acquire. Yes. The fact that Zack Snyder is coming out and straight up said, I'm not going to use Joss Whedon's work Mm -hmm. is tremendous. I, re- I I mean, I, I never really looked at Zack Snyder as like a respectable director. Like, yeah. I appreciated the work that he did. Mm-hmm. Man of Steel. He did Man of Steel, right? He did Man of Steel. Yeah. Again, I only say that I hated it just, to, you know, troll people. Mm-hmm. There's a part of me that really kind of enjoyed the film. That, to be honest, before Man of Steel, I didn't really care for Superman. Yeah. Superman as a character is hard to get into because you just upset so- a whole fan base by saying that because <laughs> Superman guys or Superman people, not guys, Superman fans are yeah. some of the hardcore people out there. So let me tell you why super nerds is, uh, <laughs> is uh, the reason why I don't di- before I didn't really care was because he's a powerful character, doesn't have any weaknesses physically and doesn't really face. Oh no, I shouldn't say that, but uh, he's just, He's just all powerful, and I don't. He can like, do everything. He can do everything, and the thing is, he can do everything. And you know, and when it comes to arguments, it's like, bam, Superman will always win, and it's that I don't like. I like mm-hmm. characters that deal with turmoil, that have weaknesses, that complications. have complications. Ba- that's why I love Batman so much, mm-hmm. you know. And with Superman, it's just like you have to write a good story for me to understand, you know, or to even relate or like this character. Some of the best Superman right, or some of the best Superman stories are ones where he is looked down upon as like a hindrance. Yeah. Rather than a solution, mm-hmm. uh, which is the one where he fights for the Communist Party. 
Oh, uh, the Red Sun. Yep, that yeah. one. I mean, consider that one. That, one. Yeah. that one's really respected that, by a lot of comic book nerds. Yeah, and that's because it's a different take on Superman. I have this argument, little tangent, before we, you know, yeah. before we do yeah. finish up and talk about uh, this whole Zack Snyder thing, because there's a little bit more to talk about. But I had an argument. And this was years ago with a friend of mine. She's a hardcore Superman fan. Like, she doesn't read the books or anything, but she like, like, <laughs> think of it this way. Um, it's like a Dark Knight like person a, that likes Batman. Yeah. Because they've seen the Dark Knight. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> I, I've heard about this and I collect the stuff yeah. and all this other stuff. I just don't know the full story of yeah. Superman. So her argument was Superman is considered the best superhero ever to be created because he's the most influential character in comic book history. That and I that's could, what I could one hundred percent agree. I could agree with that. One hundred percent agree. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Superman is the best character in all of comic book history. That's true. There is no best character, in my opinion. Yeah. I think that if you do appreciate a character and consider them to be your favorite, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with saying that. But mm -hmm. there is something wrong in saying this is the definite character that everyone should look up upon because yeah. he is truly the best. I got made fun of for liking Peter Parker Spider-Man. I, get, I, I constantly get made fun of. And mm -hmm. again, shout out to Rebel, my mm -hmm. buddy over here, our buddy, friend of our the show. Our buddy, friend of the show. Friend of the show. <laughs> just message me right now. If you haven't seen, he just messaged us. I saw the thing. <laughs> just caught up on all of our episodes. <laughs> Rebel, friend of the show. <laughs> um, we used to bicker a lot because his favorite character superhero was Batman, Batman and mine yeah. was Spider-Man. He, he hated Spider-Man. He didn't hate Spider-Man. He hated mm -hmm. Peter Parker. Oh, so there was right. a difference. Okay. And so, yes. He told like, me he has a PowerPoint presentation on, <sighs> on how Peter Parker is a terrible character. Well, then let me put a freaking PowerPoint presentation of why Bruce Wayne is a dumbass. And I'll, no, you know what? I can't do that. <laughs> he's going to come out at me and he's like, excuse me? He's going to have it ready next time. <laughs> you know, no, no, drive. I can't Boom. do that because I actually like Batman. Watch, he's going to listen to this episode. He's probably going to email it to you. Oh, no. <laughs> Rebel, please don't. Friend of the show, please don't. Anyways, go on, go on. Um, so the thing is, like, everyone has different upcomings and different reasons as to why you like superheroes. Yeah. But to basically look down upon other superheroes because they're not influential is mm -hmm. basically degrading the creation of everything else out there. Which I have a funny story after this. Go ahead. Okay. So, like, my problem is this. If you really consider Superman to be the all-powerful being and the best superhero to come out and everyone is just degenerate under that, yeah. then you're ignoring everything else and everyone else that has had a massive impact in society. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this a couple issues ago. Miles Morales is massively impactful nowadays, mm -hmm. not only because of his race and ethnicity, but because of the things that he's done in the comic books to basically be very relatable to people nowadays. Yeah. So what does Superman have? He is influential. There are movies, there are songs, there are stories, there are, you know, things that reference him. Mm -hmm. He's one of the most referenced superheroes out there. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you have to disown or not like anything yeah, else. Yeah, that doesn't out there. mean like every other superhero is just yeah, you know? <laughs> it takes a good writer mm -hmm. to get a character like Superman mm -hmm. who can do anything and everything and make him be relatable. Yeah. This is where Zack Snyder comes into play. Yes. Before we go on to that point, yes. go ahead and tell me your so, story. You had a yeah, you had a friend that's like that. And then I actually was working here at one point. It was like maybe like a couple months back where uh, a customer comes in and I'm wearing a Batman shirt. And this guy just, you know, he's just coming in and he has a Superman shirt on. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, he comes up to me. He's like, oh, you're a Batman fan? I'm like, yeah. He goes, would you say you're a big Batman fan? I'm like, yeah. He goes, okay. So let me... I've always wanted to have this argument with someone oh that's boy. a Batman fan, right? <laughs> if oh you guys boy. know me, know me, you know I know my shit. <laughs> so, uh, or usually these arguments don't end up well. Yeah. Yeah. So then, you know, he comes in, he goes, So Bruce Wayne is smart, right? I'm like, yes. He goes, he's oh, like intelligent. I'm like, he's like the second most intelligent person in the DC universe. Uh, I guess after Lex Luthor. You could say Lex Luthor and Bruce Wayne are, if anything, both the smartest. Mm hmm he goes, well, you know, Brainiac, Brainiac, but we're talking about like human wise. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> so then he comes in. So then he's like, well, you know, the crypt, you know, the Kryptonians, right? I'm like, yes, I know of the Kryptonians that Superman's from. You should he have goes, straight up said, <laughs> oh no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. What is the Kryptonians? <laughs> <laughs> Educate so then, me, please. <laughs> right. And, um, <laughs> That's funny. And um, he's like, well, you know, Superman's, you know, he's from that planet. I'm like, yes, he is. <laughs> like, I'm, it's just, he's like, he's trying to like give me new information. And I'm knowing all this. And is goes, Superman also the character that wears that green ring? Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> he comes from the water with that green ring, right? Oh, whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's got that lightning on his lightning chest. Chest, you know, after his parents got shot. Oh. <laughs> They were shot on 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 that all woman island. <laughs> oh my god! Man. Okay. Anyways, go on. I know we gotta cut this. So, um, <laughs> but just to wrap it up, yeah. So he's like, so basically his argument was, so Superman is intelligent because the Kryptonians are super intelligent, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah. So isn't Superman technically smarter than Bruce Wayne? And I'm like, yes, but I go. I go off of how these characters were brought up. I go really like, I really thought about how, how he was trying to like tell me this. And at the same time, I'm trying to think of like, and you know, like a, like a counterback, a counter um, argument where I told him, well, the thing is, is that technically he is Kryptonian, but he was raised in Smallville, Kansas. He was raised to, as a mentality to think like a normal everyday man because he honestly thought for a while as a kid he was normal. And the thing is is that I, I do believe Superman can tap into that intelligence, but the thing is Bruce Wayne's been raised on his own to be smart, to always be quick thinking right then and there in the situation, right then and there. And I think that's why when it comes to who's smarter, I think who's willing, who's who thinks faster as of intelligence wise, at least between Superman and Batman that I said that I think it takes a little bit of time for Superman because he doesn't think like that. He just thinks as a normal average, you know, person with superpowers. That's it. Cause that's how he was raised. He was raised as like, like I said, a normal everyday man while Bruce Wayne was raised in a much, you know, quicker lifestyle and stuff like that, you know, just constantly just thinking about how to do everything, how to get here, how to do that, how to do this, you know. So that's why I think Batman is technically smarter or, you know, quick thinking than Superman is. You could have ended that argument much quicker. I could have. You just say Justice League Doom. Ah, see. Because Justice League Doom showcases the approaches or the different approaches that both superheroes have. Yeah. So when it comes to Superman, if you're going to determine intelligence by species, mm-hmm. then yes, the Kryptonians are a lot smarter they're, because they were more technologically yeah. advanced yes. than we are. They've mm-hmm. developed a system to essentially, you know, have they developed a system of breeding mm-hmm. far more advanced than humanity will ever develop yeah. and will probably never touch because it's mm-hmm. inhumane. Mm-hmm. Um, they've also developed space travel yeah. and, you know, different things that we will never accomplish for the next hundreds and thousands of years, probably. Mind you, right. Yeah. Mind you, too, that they didn't have superpowers on their planet because they'd never had a yellow sun. Exactly. Now, if we're going to approach intelligence by the approach to certain situations, yes. that's where you can win mm-hmm. with Justice League Doom. Yeah. Because in Justice League Doom, and I'm going to refer to the movie because I've barely read the comic books that it was based so on. It was, it was based uh, off of Justice League Tower of Babylon. Yes. And then also there was a Victor Savage one. It was, I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? The That's Victor Savage, isn't it? Um, I think so. Yes, 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 yes. Vandal Victor, Savage. Vandal, Vandal Savage. Savage. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Oh, my God. Let me tell you this. Superman's approach to anything when it comes to problems is essentially take out the head, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Never plan for what might happen, but take out the problem then and there. But what did Batman show in Justice League do? A contingency plan. Yeah, everyone has a contingency plan. And he never revealed it to himself. Mm -mm. What did he do at the end? Well, what do we do if you get out of control? And what did Batman reply? Do you remember? Yeah, he said, I do. It's called the Justice League. Bingo. (laughs) The man is smart beyond belief. Yeah. You could have easily ended that argument right then and there and say, are we basing it off technological advances due to species Mm -hmm. or based on the approaches to different situations? Mm -hmm. And if he said, well, technological advances to species, okay, you win. Yeah, he never said that. He just wanted to uh, prove that Superman. Was, it's a basic way of thinking. Yeah. I'm like, no offense to the guy if yeah. he's listening, you know, now, <laughs> but it is a basic way of yeah. thinking. You have to be more in depth in regards to that because there yeah. are different ways that you can approach this argument. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're, <laughs> we're over the hour. So right? we're over, we're well over the hour, but, uh, so basically, yeah, the Snyder cut for justice league looks pretty, pretty significantly different. I'm hoping to see more when it gets closer. Uh, it comes out in September on HBO Max, so obviously we're going to do a review on that as well. Yeah, too. which I mean it means I have to watch the <laughs> Joss Whedon cut. Yeah, um, but it 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 does go to show that Zack Snyder does know and is taking a massively respectable approach to yeah. this movie, even if the movie does not come out to be one of the best DC movies ever. Mm-hmm. And yeah. granted, I don't think it will. 
Yeah. I still stand by that no, statement. No, that's the thing. I don't think it's going to be better. I think it's going to be different. It yeah. is going to be different. Yeah. So even if this movie bombs and it's still like a six out of ten, mm-hmm. that it missed a lot of different things, it wasn't well directed, whatever mm-hmm. it is, do you still have to respect the man for taking the approach and saying, I'm not going to use someone else's work to yeah. showcase my own work. Oh, yeah, definitely. I yeah. am going to use my work only mm-hmm. to showcase what my vision could have been mm-hmm. when it was supposedly going to come out and release. So... We will watch it. You said we'll review it. We'll review it, yes. And hopefully everything comes out well. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Renee, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap this episode up? Uh, No, that's pretty much it. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that said, thank you guys for listening to this mm-hmm. episode. If you guys are listening to this on Spotify or Podbean, in the description, there are uh, links to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe over there. We will be releasing content. I'm slowly working on it. It's been busy, um, but, you know, because I do take some time with the editing i actually put in a lot of work with the editing yeah no so yeah we have stuff that come out but you know it's brian that's doing all the you know doing all the editing guys so did you see the squadrons episode no i mean i watched halfway the squadron? Into it, yeah. yeah there were a couple edits in there that took me a while because i had to try to figure out how to do like super rotations on yeah. like a video and like how to like inverse the stuff so there that's it, cool, it does take some time for yeah. me to put those in there but content slowly coming in so if you're on podcast or podbean or spotify click the links to subscribe over to the youtube channel we will be posting some uploads on there as well youtube in the description below there are links to our podcasts on podbean and Mm -hmm. spotify so feel free click on those and follow us on there as well our socials are going to be down there as well so give us a follow Mm -hmm. as well as everything else to the twitter and instagram um profiles i guess you could say yeah i was like trying to figure out yeah profiles pages or profiles whatever you want to call them but yeah um with that said renee are we ready to wrap this up let's do it my friend hit it Thank you, citizens, for listening to this issue of Keeping Up with the Nerds Variety Hour. I am your super host, Renee. And Brian. Coming to you from 12920 Philadelphia Street, Woody, California, under City Comics. We thank you, you citizens, once again, and hope to see you on the next one.